Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. So I'm just showing you a few pictures of the rough finished frames for the uh, bench top surface grinder. And uh, yeah, that's, that should give you a good understanding. And this is gonna be a fun video because this shows a lot of the machining that went into making the um, rough sort of, uh, you know, quote unquote, unquote, castings into actual finished pieces. So this is the, um, this is the headstock. This will house the spindle and, um, and, and the motor will be on top. And this is hooked up to the, um, to the Z axis moving up and down. And I made it from 150 times 150 times five millimeter square tube and, and welded some 10 millimeter plates. And um, this is actually a relatively early video because I went back and sort of made some other adjustments, uh, by which I mean I just added a lot of material. And uh, the end mill is a 20 millimeter end mill. It's just taking a very, uh, very thin cut because I wanted to make sure that all three sides, all three, but at least three sides were completely um, uh, square to one another. So if I ever need to you know, square the spindle or if I have to put it back into the machine and remachine it, uh, it should be relatively easy to, to, to indicate it and you know to get it within uh, maybe one or two one or two hundredths of a millimeter quite easily, which is uh, which is about you know, about one thousandth of an inch. And uh, here I'm just finishing the the top. And I I, I will say that um, after experimenting with uh, cutting oil and um, and a few other other pieces, a few other um, you know lubricating and cooling methods. I found that at least the the very um, basic end mills that I have access to, they actually work very well with compressed air. They don't burn out. They hold up relatively well. For example, the the cutter that you see in the video right now, it's a four flute cobalt cutter, ten millimeters or three eighths of an inch, and um, the the biggest cut I took with it was four millimeter deep, six millimeter, or even eight millimeter step over, uh, 300 millimeters of, uh, of feed, and the RPM was around, um, around 900. And it took that cut, and it took it several times until I, uh, until I overheated the thing, but before I overheated the thing, it worked superbly so I will say that these videos are, are done in uh, October so they reflect the oil mentality at that point but I will go on with compressed air since it has yielded some very good results uh, previously so here I'm machining the, um, the lower frame and I decided to machine the the, ra the the rail platforms or you know the, the area where the y-axis rails will sit and also to machine the, um, the headstock uh, plate at the back now in hindsight and as they say hindsight is is 2020 20, I should have made that plate that I'm machining um, at least 15 millimeters if not 20 because you can see from the video that just by welding it it actually distorted quite a bit more than I would, would have expected because I also put in some spot welds in the middle of the plate so you know I drilled the hole and spot welded it to to the frame before uh, before welding the the uh, the overhang uh, edges but Surprisingly still, it pulled quite a bit, and I did not expect that to happen. But you live and learn, so we, 
you know, I, I, I machined the top off and I'm going to, I'm going to be using the epoxy method anyway to basically uh, get the, the z-axis uh, upright post completely square with with the uh, with with the uh, table and the saddle and here you can see I'm machining the um, the saddle it's made from 15 uh, millimeter thick plate um, rather bars which were welded together and I put some two two spacer blocks at the bottom which you can see I'm machining right now and th they sort of serve two um, two um, um, two functions function number one uh, they raised the the saddle just enough that all my ball screw mounts uh, fit underneath quite well so I don't have to machine them um, you know uh, off too much or make them a lot lower and the other reason was that I wanted to um, reinforce the bottom to um, to make it a bit more twist resistant now here you can see I'm just cleaning up, up the pads and I think it worked out pretty well because um, it raised the bed it raised the saddle um, x-axis just just by a hair but it seems that it did work quite well so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that and here I'm machining the um, uh, ball screw nut um, flats and again here I'm running without any oil and without any any compressed air which was a big booboo on my part and basically this cut uh, pretty much destroyed the edges because you can see that the chips are all blue and um, I, 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 I pushed the, uh, the end mill a bit too, too hard. So, um, but when doing um, side milling, uh, side milling cuts, it works relatively well. So if I need to, you know, to clean up a, a large edge, then it's, uh, then it's pretty useful. Just doing, doing another cut such as that one, such as, su such as the previous one. And, um, I think the saddle is the is the heaviest piece that well the heaviest moving piece at least because the the headstock was only eight kilograms or something like that but it's surprisingly stiff but the saddle was like around 30 kilos or something something around that which I believe is uh, 40 pounds. Oh, how much is it uh, so you can see that I'm, I'm milling the, the, the side of the saddle and that serves two, two functions. Number one, it gives me a nice edge to in indicate off of and the second reason is that I'm going to be mounting a, an L profile there and on that L profile the um, energy drag chain cable thing will, will rest. So it serves uh, two two purposes. But uh, let me think. A hundred pounds is forty kilos, right? So it was thirty kilos. So that's seventy-five pounds, I think. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. So um, this is the um, the uh, Z post. <clears throat> this is. That wasn't a German joke, by the way. Um, and I sort of cleaned up the, the surfaces where the uh, linear guides will, will be. And the linear guides that I used for the Z-axis were um, 30 millimeter ones because I did some testing with on, on my computer with 15 and 30. And on the on the X and on the Z, it doesn't really affect it that much. But on the Z especially, it seems that a lot of the deflection came from undersized um, linear rails. So that's why I went with 30 millimeters. And um, just as a bonus, this is a 
a quick video about the CNC uh, CNC lathe and it's running quite well until the two third mark then it's you know the deflect the the movement of the needle is less than one thousandth but the last you know 50 millimeters it goes from basically uh, one thousandth to almost four thousand so I, I think the tool deflected quite a bit but here you can see just a few pictures of the uh, headstock machining as well and uh, that's it that's pretty much it for for today so um thank you very much for watching and uh, make sure you return for the for the next episode all right thanks very much